the United States, a vocal movement surrounding the importance of maintaining or improving our physical health can reach our consciousness as early as grade school. Eating well, exercising regularly, and scheduling routine checkups are often the effects of focused education initiatives ingrained in our early development. But are the same efforts and level of care invested in the mental health of our fellow Americans? In the United States, you don't have to look beyond legislation as to why it tends to be overshadowed. So up until 2012, it wasn't mandated to cover essential health benefits like mental health treatment and substance abuse. So if legislation doesn't respect mental health treatment, why should anyone else? In my experience, it is harder for folks with uh, mental health and substance use disorder issues to get help. There's a different level of societal sanction. We've got the big blue sign, we expect when you're sick, you, you're gonna go to the hospital or you're gonna go to a clinic. You don't have any sign saying mental health clinic. Folks don't wanna be judged. They're afraid that I'll be judged. Not only judged, but I'll be judged as being weak. I'll be judged as being less than. I'll be judged as being somehow incapable. And that will stick with me for a really long time and it'll be really hard to live down. In America, nearly one in 25 adults live with a serious mental illness. Staggeringly, approximately 60% of those same adults haven't received any form of mental health services in a calendar year. Another reason why folks who experience a mental health issue don't seek out the treatment is our sort of uh, historical understandings. Some of the early explanations were about maybe it was a punishment from God, maybe it was a moral failing, and that translates today into there must be something that that person did wrong or that their family did wrong, or that somehow they're incapable, somehow they're less than, and they only have themselves or their family to blame for the problem they're experiencing. As one half of chronic mental illnesses begin manifesting by the age of 14, it has never been more important for us to support a cultural shift in how we view and treat mental illness. I was diagnosed with depression at age 15. Depression runs in my family. No one is really accepting of it. It's just like, well, that's just the way he or she is. And you just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and just, you know, get it together. So that quiet suffering, it's normalized in my family and I just didn't want to be that person to carry all that pain. We need to fully embrace the fact that prevention works. The earlier we can address an issue, the more success we can have addressing it. When we think about a person who is seeking mental health care and may be reluctant to pursue that care, there's been this notion that somehow people who have mental health concerns are different than other people. And sometimes they're referred to as crazy, or they're referred to as less than, and that's really dehumanizing a person with a mental health need. One step towards the destigmatization of mental illness is to change the language. Once we change the language, we change mindsets. And we also, most importantly in my opinion, change the way that people look at themselves. Mental wellness is essential to everyone's overall health. Thankfully, the National Association of Social Workers strives to end the age-old separation of mind and body, the first real step towards removing the stigma of mental illness. Physical health and emotional health, they go hand in hand. I can't see emotional wellness without physical wellness. And one without the other, you're going to see a deficit. As the leading cause of disability worldwide, Depression is majorly contributing to the global burden of disease. That's why the National Association of Social Workers promotes the normalization and widespread availability of mental health screenings. In conjunction with a physical or routine checkup, patients can be referred for a 20-minute consult within the confines of their physician's office without a separate appointment or needing to travel to a second location. So five years ago, Springfield Psychological intentionally set out to partner with primary care physician practices to integrate behavioral health services within the medical setting. As part of this initiative, we've reached out and hired licensed clinical social workers and psychologists to be behavioral health specialists on site. If a patient scores elevated in depression or anxiety, then the doctor will initiate what we call as a warm handoff. What we find is that this really normalizes the overall care that a person receives. We don't see the same level of stigma attached to it, and patients are really more likely to comply with overall engagement and treatment. So we find statistically that when that process occurs, a patient is 85% likely to engage and continue in treatment, where if that happens, outside of the medical setting, they have a 20 to 25% chance of follow-through. And for many people 
who might not ever walk into a mental health clinic. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. Maybe this is a normal thing. I've been asked these uh, behavioral health questions as part of my physical exam. And there's also a social worker right here on site who's ready to provide services. So maybe this is okay for me to seek those services. Social workers aren't just advocates for mental health. They hold elective offices across the nation and have a key impact on actual legislation, getting access to mental health expanded and working to help keep all Americans insured. 25% of social workers work in healthcare, schools, hospices, medical facilities, and champion the homeless, domestic abuse victims, veterans, and families wishing to adopt. I cannot imagine a world with our social workers. Social work is about saving lives. It's about being the best person that you can be. The breadth of what social workers can do is amazing. The NASW now represents more than 120,000 social work practitioners, clinicians, educators, researchers, and students, and is recognized as the largest and most reliable voice of professional social work in America. NASW is part of a uh, national campaign that was launched years ago called Change Direction. In the Change Direction campaign, it was really a message, and actually Michelle Obama was one of the leaders in this effort, to say we need to change the conversation in our country about mental health and about seeking mental health care. We need to have a culture of mental wellness where people and their families, their neighbors and their friends say to each other that it is okay. In fact, it's a strength to ask for help. No longer does a person who has a mental illness have to quietly suffer. At 15, I played the blame game. I blame my family because mental illness runs in my family. And I was just able to get it together. So when I did pull myself up by my bootstraps, it wasn't because I was ignoring my condition. It was because I wanted to get well. Help to improve your mental health is available. And most importantly, it works. The National Association of Social Workers is chipping away at the stigma of seeking help for mental wellness and changing the culture of overall health a little more each day. To learn more about the National Association of Social Workers or to become a member, visit socialworkers.org.